So we've got a lot to do today, and we're kicking it off with a raid from the Brawny Stompers of the Overfiend, which is an orc uh, wog, I guess. Uh, as you may have noticed, we have a few new additions to the colony as well. So Phocis, Heracus, and Boricus are all recent inductees into the colony. So Phocis is a melee specialist, formerly a royal guard. So he's restless and greedy, not the best traits, but we'll see what a little bit of uh, mental conditioning can do. And he looks like he might be an officer candidate, because he is uh, quite skilled in social. So he's somebody that we can have fill a similar role to, like, Thule and Mikolas, where they go around and keep morale up, recruit people, etc., etc. Heracus, on the other hand, is a shooting and crafting specialist, or at least... Uh, he will be a crafting specialist. He certainly has the desire for it. And so he won't actually be a space marine. We're going to say he's too old and his skill set's not necessarily optimal for it. So instead, we'll make him into a tech priest. Now, he could be a decent tech marine as well. But I think it makes a little bit more sense for him to be a tech priest because then he can make use of his medical skill and his artistic skill as well. The tech marines are only going to be doing crafting and construction and mining. And obviously if we made him like a, an apothecary, then he wouldn't get to use some of his other skills. So I think a tech priest makes the best use of all of his skills. And then finally, Boricus is kind of another interesting... Uh, I wouldn't call him a jack of all trades. He's definitely not great at everything or even good at everything. But... He does have this interesting 8 in medicine, which isn't really good enough on its own, especially without any passion, to justify making him an apothecary. So I think what we'll do is make him like an assault marine or something. And, you know, if we find ourselves in need of emergency medical care out in the field, it'd be nice, it'll be nice to know that he's capable of it. But we're not necessarily going to make him an apothecary and rely on it. The apothecaries are going to be people like Gordian who have a lot of passion for medicine and are, you know, very capable of doing surgery and whatnot. He's just not that person. So, he'll be good at doing uh, field tending, but uh, not going to be operating on people. Right, so that's our three recruits there. We also have another recruit pending. We need to go rescue Ariston, so we're going to do that today. I think we might have another quest as well. I need to take a look. So I've actually recorded this episode, or attempted to, twice now. And the game crashed on me both times. So fingers crossed it doesn't happen here. But as I mentioned before, we do have orcs coming in. As you can see, there's some shadows on the ground here from where they're about to land. So we should probably draft up our team here and get them out into the field. I'm only going to take the actual... Uh, Space Marines. I'm not going to bring any any recent recruits out. So let's just get them moving to here, that rally point, and then we'll sort it out. Okay, so the orcs are all landing on the southern part of the map. Oh, wait. No, <laughs> no they're not. Uh, Tarkus, could you perhaps deal with these two? So just hang out right here. Actually, right there is probably smarter. You just camp that spot. Actually, Thule, since this guy's going to be hidden away there. Yeah, just go mess him up. And that one's down. Okay. Tarkus, let's get moving. So, it looks like the orcs are congregating to about this point. Therefore, we can set up a little bit further forward than we would have otherwise... I don't want to be too far back because I don't want them targeting any of our power supply stuff. So we want to deploy, you know, out here. So actually, you know what? That's a decent spot there. Martellus, let's put you here. Um, I'm going to keep Gordian back, I think. Actually, we'll put you on the corner there. Mikolas and Thule are going to get over here. They have um, they have shields that let them shoot. So 
they're going to be a little bit safer when charging into melee combat against people who have ranged weapons. I'm going to move Cyrus over here and let him start taking pot shots at the enemy. Unfortunately, um, there's no enemies in his range. Let's go here. I think that'll give you a couple shots on these two as they go by. Oh, he just shot that guy in the torso. And then in the toe. And then in the jaw. Wow, three for three. Oh yeah, he's dead. Blew his jaw clean off. And nearly just obliterated his torso. Let's get this out of the way. That's getting kind of annoying. So this guy's also dead. Yeah, completely gone as far as his leg is concerned. Kidney and torso there. We're going to allow both of these because we definitely want to turn that into some uh, orc fungus burgers, potentially. Uh, more likely just nutrient paste, but it's uh, free food nonetheless. And so they are now charging. Apparently they took me shooting that grot personally. All right, that guy's really spraying bullets, so let's fall back. Sorry, we'll tactically retreat behind this tree. Oh, I guess they weren't interested in following. So let's get back out there. We're just going to continue to skirmish. It seems to be by far the best way to utilize Cyrus is to basically just set him up at the limit of his range and let him pick off as many enemies as possible, just like he did there. Unfortunately, his range isn't that much better than a lot of these other... Uh-oh, what are you guys doing? I probably shouldn't have... Hold on, hold on, this was a mistake. Don't allow those right now. Uh... Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I just, I don't need them getting themselves killed trying to pick up a corpse for no reason. Wow, you guys are persistent. And that's an unfortunate time for a map render. So we'll move back just into range. Maybe hereabouts. Shot his finger off. So yeah, like basically the moment... Ow, he just got clipped in the head. It didn't do a lot of damage, but still. Basically the moment that he comes into range, the... Oh, God damn it. You know what? Whatever, go for it. They're actually beginning their assault. So you better just stay over there for a little while. Fall back, please, Cyrus. Uh, go over there. And, yeah, they're just going to walk into this kill zone. They are now fleeing. Sucks to be you guys. Oh, there's a bear. I was like, who's who's that? Uh, right, do we pursue? Cyrus, I would say, go get yourself patched up because we're going to want to send you on some of these missions. So, ideally, we'd have you fully healed up to do that. But everybody else can pursue. We want to kill as many of these orcs as possible. You just blew his heart out and he kept running. That's impressive. Oh, man. Running gun is just so unfair. They can do it, too. And they frequently will, but... Uh, doing it with Space Marines just puts it on a whole other level. Especially with bolt weapons. Come on. You can get him. Uh, winged him a little bit. Alright, as you were. Head on home. Let's grab all this stuff. So we'll turn the weapons into parts and the uh, orcs into food. Right, so the game crashed on me again, but I was able to recover from it. So we're right where we left off. Fortunately, I did have a chance to sneak in a save. We're basically just waiting for Cyrus to heal up so that we can send him off on a mission. But while we're waiting for that, I wanted to fill you guys in on some happenings around the base. So... Obviously, we have some new crafting benches, the fabrication bench being the big one. The big thing here, um, ignoring all of this armor, 
is the ability to make components for ourselves. Of course, we can use steel to make regular components, but since we only had two advanced components, I felt that the best investment I could make with those was the fabrication bench because it will allow me to make more advanced components. Granted, we will need plasteel and gold to do that, and we don't have those, but at least this way, when we burn those two, it wasn't, you know, basically removing our ability to ever make <laughs> components again. Additionally, I threw down an electric smithy, so if we want to make just very basic melee weapons and things of that nature, we can. Uh, a lot of the modded 40k weapons are in here as well. Mine are actually made at a different bench though, so we probably won't be using any of these. But we'll see. There's a lot of overlap, so we're going to have like multiple versions of chain swords, etc. And then of course the machining table, which is going to let us make shield belts and uh, artillery shells and things like that. A lot of ammo for different turrets, concertina wire. So all things that will eventually prove useful, but not maybe immediately needed. Just kind of seeing where everything is so that I know what I need and what I don't need. I think another thing we'll actually want to throw down is a, uh, not the repair bench, I mean eventually repair bench, but an electric tailoring bench is probably a good idea. I'll just put it over here for now. We do have quite a lot of orc hide that we can turn into clothing for people. Granted, uh, eventually everybody's hopefully going to be wearing power armor, or at least the vast majority of people will be. But in the meantime, we can just focus on getting them into some more comfortable clothing. And all of my stuff is made at this artificer's workbench. So I wanted to make it out of slate because in my opinion it looks the coolest when it's made out of slate. But the best we can probably do right now is steel. Uh, where do I want to put it though? I think for now we'll just throw it here. Again, this is all temporary. These benches will get moved. This is supposed to be the Apothecarium, so this space will be reserved for crafting and storage of augmentations, whether that be bionic limbs or eyes or gene seed components. That's all going to be manufactured here and stored here. But right now, we're just going to turn it into a kind of general purpose manufacturing area. Let's see, Cyrus, how are you doing? So, you did get shot in the head twice. Fortunately, you marines have a pretty thick skull, so it didn't really do much damage. And you took a shot in your... Hey, Mastaman. <laughs> but that looks like it'll be fine, too. His movement is actually still well above regular human levels, so it might be worth just sending him now, because he will, in fact, heal on the road. So, let's take a look at the various missions that we have on offer. So obviously there's this rescue mission for Ariston, and we're going to want to do that because that's another battle brother that we can bring back into the fold. And the more people we have here to defend, the more we can kind of press out and attack other things. But we have this quest as well. Ministins call for help. This is a moderate face-off. The Ministin scouts have discovered a large group of Camboa Confederation. They're requesting your assistance in a face-off. So this is two AI factions fighting it out, and we can intervene on behalf of one of them to basically ensure that they win the battle. Now, the rewards are pretty crap. They're basically offering me four assault rifles and some camp loot, or five chain shotguns, some silver, and some camp loot, or just plain old goodwill. And honestly, in this case, I think I'll take the goodwill. Ministin is a human faction, just regular human settlers of Cronus. And so, of course, we want to bring them back into the Emperor's light. And if they're already on board, then why not do it peacefully? Versus the Camboa Confederation is... Um, tribal. So they are going to remain hostile. Attacking them is probably not going to change much. So we'll have to... Recruit forcibly if we're going to recruit from them. So let's accept for the goodwill. And we have 27 days to complete that. 
versus 20 days to rescue Ariston. But that is something I want to do immediately. Because that's another, again, space marine. Not, not just a regular pawn, but a space marine who would be joining us. Now, Ariston is a scout sergeant, so he's going to be equipped like Cyrus, but not in you know sniper mode. He's going to be just like a regular scout sergeant. And while that's not quite at the same level as, say, like a Tarkus, it's still a lot better than a bog standard human, right? So let's take a look at the world map. Oh, right. I forgot. I, I tried to preload the world map before I jump into recording, but because I had to restart the game, unfortunately, I had to do that as well. So, oh, we have Peace Talks too. I forgot about that. Okay, we have plenty of time, though. But that's something that we're going to want to send Thule to. Maybe Thule and an escort. So, Ariston is here at this prisoner camp. It's defended by four turrets, a mortar, and two Eldar. So, are we comfortable sending Cyrus alone to do that? I think he can handle it, if I'm being honest. Two Eldar is nothing. We've seen how quickly he deals with orcs, and I think he dealt with Eldar pretty quickly as well. The Mortar is potentially a concern, but if he can kill the Eldar before they man the Mortar, then that's a moot point. The turrets will be harder because they'll have to basically hang back out of their range and just kind of plank them to death, unless he can find a way to take out their electrical infrastructure. Which is possible, but you know, I, I think he is capable of doing this solo, and I think it'd be fun to try. So, to that end, let's go ahead and form the caravan. We're going to send him down here. It says six days. I would wager it'll probably take him one or one and a half to get there. So let's lock that in. Again, it's going to be Cyrus operating solo. The way he works best. I don't want any of this stuff. We're not bringing anything at all. We're going for speed, so 74 tiles per day, geez. Uh, unlimited food because he can forage more than he needs to eat. I don't think it's going to be worth bringing medicine along. Cyrus is an okay medic. He can, you know, he can do a good, as good a field tending as anybody, but he's definitely not Gordian. But you know, maybe we can bring some herbal medicine. It, I mean, every... Granted, we're moving incredibly fast, but every little bit that he carries does slow him down. So, yeah. I think if it turns out that Arson is badly injured, we'll just stabilize him and then get moving back to base as quickly as possible. There's no point trying to get the best 10 possible out of Cyrus because he's, he's just so limited in terms of skill. So, yeah, we'll send him with absolutely nothing. Just him, his armor, and his weapon. That's all he needs, right? So let's lock that in. And once he returns with Ariston, then we can look at dealing with the other missions because we'll have a few more people that we can leave back at base, right? What do we have here? Back to machinery. All right, so I have this uh, mineral scanner, mineral sonar that's currently working its way through the area. So eventually it'll hit this outer radius. And it, as you can see there, so there's compacted machinery here. There's a bit there as well. It'll give me these little highlights as to where stuff is. Who's starving and why? Oh. Oh, cease because he's asleep. Well, when he wakes up, he can feed himself. Now, I've started excavation on another room. This is going to be the command center. It's largely just going to be for looks. Uh, it's not going to serve a lot of practical purpose. Though it would in a, a real fortress monastery, right? Just in this instance... Uh, there's not a lot they can actually do in a command center. So I'm mostly going to be populating it with stuff from... I thought it was in this one, but maybe not. Oh, it's in props. Sorry. So in the props section, there's this data console. And there's actually quite a few iterations of it. So, for example, the planning table is what we might plant in the center of that. Or even... Um, I think the display table is kind of cool also. But basically, we're going to have a big center console that people can kind of stand around and look busy. And then we'll have some other screens along the walls and whatnot. And maybe we'll give it like a cool red uh, lighting just so it, it looks super serious. But again, not a whole lot is actually going to be happening in there. It's more for aesthetics. But 
for the time being, I'm just going to get it dug out. And if we want to use it for a more immediate need, we can obviously do that. But down the line, it will be the command center. And then I'm thinking next to it, we can build uh, maybe the mess hall. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out where I want to put everything. Let me keep things rolling while I uh, discuss base layout because we want to get Cyrus moving. So let me get the planning tool because it'll be easier for me to help you guys visualize this. So, oops, sorry, that should be a double thick wall there. So it actually be like this. We're going to have a hallway that runs basically the, the length of the base there. And this will be at least four wide, probably maybe five wide because we can put like a heavy bulkhead there. So we're going to have a hallway that basically lets people get from the main hallway that's right here through into the defensive area. Now, that leaves us with, if we have a hallway running all the way there, we have all of this space, right? So I'm thinking that can be like a dining hall because it's relatively central, easy enough to access for everybody. And then potentially behind that, or maybe over here, we can have the main bunking areas. Some people suggested putting the bunks like right along this hallway here. I just, I don't quite know where they would fit because I do plan to mine out a lot of this. Again, I want like a maybe three thick wall, but this is all gonna be embrasured so that we can fire out of it. And everything else that you see here is gonna get mined out so that we can fire out of it. Because if we have this big chunk of earth here, we can't utilize that to defend our base. It's just gonna be in the way. We want to get rid of it so that we can embrasure all this and shoot through it. And I, I will have bulkheads in here. So this isn't going to be one long hallway. It'll be sectioned. So maybe like halfway through we'll have some sort of bulkhead. Just so that if one area does get breached, the entire section doesn't get breached. And we can even put embrasures here so that if one area does get breached, the people in the next area can actually turn and fire into it. Uh, just, just to have all the fail safes possible, right? So I'm thinking something like that. Now, oh God, Martellus, please stop. Who, who's nearby? Thule, I need you to break this up. Try to arrest Martellus, because he's going to punch that guy to death. Thule, you're not moving very quickly here. <laughs> he's like, oh, let me just put this down. Okay, cool. Ah, <sighs> Jeez, all right. As you were, I wish you would have worked a little bit quicker to stop that. We're very lucky he didn't just punch a hole through Herakus. I, I'm willing to bet he probably held back there. I would hope so. Otherwise, this guy would just be murdered. Um, yeah, just some bruising. We got very fortunate there. Oh, he did get bit by that old Betcher's gland, though. It's so funny how it considers it a bite. Really, what's happening there is they're, um, they're spitting acid, effectively. Uh, like, spitting stomach acid. Which, it, it, again, it's one of those old kind of legacy um, gene seed abilities that Space Marines have that doesn't really get touched on a lot anymore. But yeah, they can basically retch up like stomach acid to burn their foes with. And um, for whatever reason, it registers as a bite scar or a bite. So that's why, that's why we saw people when we initially took these prisoners uh, losing body parts to the Space Marines biting them off. It's because of that. So here is the Artificer's workbench. This is where all of my 40k stuff is made. It looks like I'm missing some textures for some of these things. But these are all the weapons. So we'll start at the top. We have Tech Priest robes, Servitor's bodysuit, some Mechanicus headgear for either Tech Priest or Servitor's. Then we get into the Space Marine stuff, so we have these Astartes underclothes. It's basically just like the loincloth. If you if you look up a lot of um, 40k artwork where the Space Marines are having their armor put on them, you'll see them kind of wearing these like like linen boxer brief type things that are like you know basically just like folds of linen. That's what these are. And then I made it so that the uh, here I'll have Thule model it for you. How about that? 
because he's actually wearing it right now. So Thul, do me a favor. Stop what you're doing. Move up here in the light where we can see you. And if you'd be so kind as to drop your armor. Oh, he's going to haul it, though. God damn it. Can I just... Yeah, there we go. Just drop it. Yeah, so that's what it looks like. Uh, it's a little bit low res at this uh, this level of zoom. But you can see it's got the little nodes for the black carapace and everything. And then some muscularity drawn onto it. Um, and then the little, like, again, like clothy type thing. And it's meant to be transparent, so the skin color actually shows through. There's a little bit of shading on the edges there, but uh, whatever skin color they have will actually show through. It's not just, like, one set body texture. All right, go ahead and um, re-equip your armor and go about your business. So, yeah, that's what that one looks like. Then we have captains, chaplains, librarians, apothecaries, all of their different power armors, tech marine. Uh, we have tactical and tactical sergeant. Uh, basically, the only difference there is one has a skull in the arrow or the other doesn't. So Tarkus, for example, who's currently lollygagging. Perfect. He decided to model this for us. You can see the tactical arrow has a skull in it, indicating that he is, in fact, a sergeant tactical marine. And in this case, there's actually a Roman numeral 4 indicating that he is from the 4th company. Uh, it could also mean 4th squad, but in this case, uh, I wasn't going to make an armor for every squad. So we're going to say that that 4 indicates the company. Uh, move back on over to here. What else do we have? So I haven't finished drawing the back, or the, sorry, the jump packs for the assault marines yet, but that's easy enough. They're fully implemented. I just need to actually finish the artwork. Devastator Marines, same deal. Uh, we have Regular and Sergeant. They have the kind of chevron or chevron with a skull, and then the backpack is a little bit different. We also have, oh, that should not say Black Legion. I need to fix that. That is definitely not Black Legion. Uh, but we do have Terminator armor. As you can see, all of these are absurdly expensive, um, and rightfully so. They are incredibly powerful. But once we have a huge supply of Plasteel, and components we can make these pretty regularly and then finally we get down to the scout armor so we have scout carapace and then scout sniper carapace the only difference being the cloak and i believe yeah that's about it visually they're different but statistically they're the same then we have helmets for all of these as well so two flavor of standard power armor helmet we have the uh the regular and the beaky we have an Apothecary's Helmet, a Veteran Apothecary's Helmet, which is what uh, Gordian is wearing. The Tech Marine Helmet. Now, this one is actually very unique to Martellus. It's based exactly off of his helmet in Dawn of War 2. Sorry, I keep pausing. I don't mean to do that. Um, it's based exactly off of his helmet from Dawn of War 2. So it's not actually just a generic Tech Marine Helmet. I should probably specify it is, in fact... Martellus's helmet, and then I'll make a more generic Tech Marine helmet for any additional Tech Marines we get. We have the Skull for the Chaplains, a Psychic Hood for the Librarians, some Veteran and Ancients helmets, just to distinguish, you know, more Veteran people, maybe some Stern Guard or Vanguard veterans. We have these Respirators if we want to do some bareheaded Marines without, you know, just basic faces, and then, of course, a Terminator helmet. Um, also, some Scout headsets. I think Ariston's wearing one, so you guys will get to see one in action soon enough. But uh, these are just to give the scout something to wear on their head that's not a power armor helmet. They can also wear the respirators. And then we just get into the Cadian stuff, which isn't finished yet. Um, weapons, chain sword, power sword, all the different flavor of power weapons, including the fist. We got lightning claws in single and dual format. Thunder hammer, two handed thunder hammer, Damon hammer. Bolt Pistol Bolter, Stalker Bolter, Storm Bolter, Heavy Bolter, Flamer. Still working on a texture for the Heavy Flamer, but it is implemented, so it, it would just basically show up as nothing if somebody picked it up, but it would work. And then back into some Cadian stuff with the Laz weapons, and then some more generic 40k things like Stubbers, Auto Pistols, Auto Guns, etc, etc. What else? Auto cannon, or sorry, excuse me, assault cannons. So that's something that we would probably give to some of our Terminators. Of course, you've seen Cyrus make extensive use of his Astarte sniper rifle. I think Ariston has an Astarte shotgun. We'll see how that functions close range on some orcs, potentially. 
Uh, yeah, so that is the extent of the equipment in my mod currently. Obviously, we have other things like my bench here, the drop pod. Uh, another thing that we haven't looked at yet, but I do have implemented and they should be working is the tarantula turrets. So we can't afford these yet. They require plasteel, but we have this uh, dual heavy bolter turret and there's also a dual las cannon. So whenever we get enough, oh, we actually have enough plasteel. We just need more regular steel. Interesting. Maybe we should do that because that would be a nice little extra layer of defense there. And it would just completely rip people up, too. It'd be a lot of fun to watch. Okay. Well, I think we'll cut here while... Oh, Cyrus is basically there, but... Oh, so he just finished his break, and he's already on the verge of breaking again. Why aren't they doing any recreation? Is it because I put this in the prisoner area? They won't use it? He also doesn't have a gun, so he can't go use... He can't use these for recreation because he doesn't have a gun. So, you know what? What's the most basic gun that we can currently make? Is there such a gun? Maybe I can make a stubber. Hmm. Auto pistol is pretty cheap. Alternatively... That's slightly more expensive, but a little bit more appropriate. Hmm. Could just go full in on the auto gun. I don't want to waste that much steel, though. Uh, what else can we do for recreation? Let's look at this really quickly. Punching bag. We could put that down inside and just let them kind of wail on it. They make it out of orc leather, too, so it's not as much of a waste. Yeah, here. You guys can build that and just kind of wail on it. Ooh, these character sheets would be kind of nice. Because they can, they could be like important documents, right? But it's actually like a D&D character sheet, but nobody needs to know that. So maybe in the command center, we can put a bunch of these down and people will be doing quote unquote recreation. Or they'll be doing, you know, commander stuff in there, but really it's just like a recreation hangout. Same with some of these like cards and things. We can kind of scatter them and make them maybe not look like board games. But people will go and actually, you know, fulfill some recreation in there while looking like they're doing something thematically appropriate. Thank you for getting on that so quickly, Tarkus. Cyrus, are you there yet? Almost. All right, so Cyrus has arrived at the map location. Let's give this a quick survey. So we have a turret, a turret, another turret there, and one hidden in the back. This, I think, is the mortar. Yeah. Minimum range 21 not loaded. So that's definitely the mortar. It's just a Eldar mortar. And there is the Eldar manning it. And then there's also one in here watching Ariston, our scout sergeant. Hmm. What are these? Ooh, lavish package survival meals. So is there a way that we can kill the power? If we were to knock out this battery, I think the generator would still power this. Potentially, so that doesn't necessarily help us. What are you connected to? I'm not seeing a wire, so it's hard to say. I'm guessing it's connected to this though. That seems a bit far, but it is connected. So the way that they have this routed, I, I don't think that we can knock it out. So he is going to have to plink these turrets to death, unfortunately. Um, let's see. I'm going to get him to there for now. We need to kill this Eldar first. The turrets don't have particularly good range. But the mortar obviously will. And that's a far bigger threat. Let's see. Oh, he just grabbed a shell. He's loading it. Well, crap. They're already <laughs> shooting at us. There it goes. Ooh, that was closer than I would like. And that thing is relatively rapid fire. That's great. Yeah, please shoot the guy. 
Come on, headshot. Oh, that was so close. Cyrus, come on. It's life and death here. Oh, great. And he's returning fire. Cyrus, I need you to be more accurate. I think they are hitting. It might just be bouncing off the armor. I honestly can't tell. Well, you hit him in his empty gene seed slot. He's going to bleed pretty profusely from that. Fall back, fall back, fall back. Cyrus, fall back, please. <laughs> uh, why don't you get in here and see what you can do? Oh, he just clipped somebody good. All right, I think that guy is getting the hell out of dodge, so this one is proving to be a bigger threat. Can we just outrange him? What kind of gun is this? So a Shuriken Cannon has more range than the Astartes Sniper Rifle. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just not using my range to its uh, maximum effect. But there really isn't any cover back here. Maybe if we get over here. Oh, nice. Caught him on the run. That blew his arm probably clean off if he dropped the gun. Alright, so now we're in the clear. The only thing that can hurt us are the turrets. And if we keep our distance, they can't even do that. So, Yeah, I think we're going to do just fine. I really need to figure out how to hide those. <laughs> it's weird seeing like Eldar and regular humans getting shot in the gene seed slot. Yeah, so now we have to plank these turrets. Kaboom. Oh, nice. We still get the component. Uh, that one already blew up. I don't know if he can hit this one. Not at that angle anyway. So move over here. Still can't. Well, I think he's safe to go over here. Yeah, this might take some time. Cool, that's another one down. And then we just gotta sneak up close enough to get the one in the back. And that should be enough to do it. Cannot hit target. Why not? There he goes. Cool. So let's finish off these Eldar. And then we'll free our buddy Arston. So I believe that's all clear. Let's see, Cyrus. Head on in here. And maybe we have to claim that first. Yep. And free the prisoner. Perfect. Rescue he joins. So Arson has joined up with us. Again, he's a scout sergeant. Um, still more proficient in shooting than melee, but he does enjoy melee a little bit more. And just all in all, he's going to be sort of a more... what What's the word I'm looking for? He'll be closer to like a tactical marine than, you know, Cyrus is very much like a sniper, scout type character. Well, I mean, they're both scouts, but he's going to be a little bit more close combat oriented with his Astarte shotgun, obviously. So, the way I see it, when we get initiates, like Phocis here, or Boricus, we'll have two scout squads initially. Potentially, you know, more down the line, but we have two sergeants currently. So if they are very, very ranged focused, they can join Cyrus's scout snipers. And if they're more close combat oriented, then they can join Ariston with the kind of like brawler scouts. Just like the two, well, I mean, scouts have basically been phased out of the tabletop completely at this point. But back in the day when, you know, the OG Marines were still relevant. You could basically deploy scouts in like two kind of three ways. 
there was the scout snipers then you could do bolt pistol chain sword or you could do bolter or shotgun so you basically had the snipers and then you had kind of like the mid to close range scouts and that's kind of what we're going to try for here let's deconstruct anything that would yield components there's actually quite a few things that might and then it's nice that all the turrets exploded but still gave us components that's very kind of them and the Eldar dropped food. Why are the Eldar dressed like Cadians? Hmm. Something suspicious here. Maybe that's how they lured Ariston in. They were pretending to be Cadians. And when he tried to join back up with Imperium forces, it turned out they were actually those damn space elves in disguise. And they took him prisoner. We'll pretend that's what happened. Okay, so I think we've effectively torn down everything that can be torn down for components. This thing doesn't seem to have an option for deconstructing. Oh, there it is. I don't know why. Oh, it was already marked. That's why. Arston, would you mind uh, tearing that down? Then we'll see what we get. It's probably just going to be Wraithbone, which we don't necessarily want. But I'd, like, I'd at least like to see if it'll drop components. And it does. Perfect. Four of them, even. Uh, I'm going to clear out some of this stuff here. All of those are done. Wow, do we... Have I completely neglected the base? Is there, like, nothing for them to work on? It's got to be something, right? I asked them to mine. Why aren't you mining? Martellus is smelting. Okay, so we clearly need to change your priorities. Crafting is uh, going to be a three. And mining, I think, should be a two. Yeah, I think that's better. Um, in the meantime, let's jump over to the floors tab. Where are the floors that we've been using? I believe it is these in sandstone. There's still quite a bit of floor that needs to be laid down, so let's ask them to do that. Additionally... There is some surfaces in need of smoothing. So we'll get that taken care of there. I believe this entire back wall also needs it. Yeah, all of that. So that should keep them busy for a little bit. Oh, actually, this does too. Okay, yeah. So that gives them some build projects, if nothing else. And a lot of them should take part in that. Now, Thule and Nicholas aren't doing anything, which means that all of you guys are probably to the point where your resistance is gone. So, Demetrios is the medic, and potentially our new... Well, not our new, but our, uh, our apprentice to Gordian. I suppose we should just go ahead and try to recruit him now. We'll just do recruit. What about you? Let's see, a little bit of shooting, crafting, medical. So she was going to be a tech priest. I don't see why not. We don't have a lot of crafting to do, though. I wish she was better suited to construction, but she can at least assist with mining. And she's not going to be doing a whole lot of it locked up in here. So let's recruit her as well. And you... You were a space marine all the way. <laughs> he can't honestly do a whole lot else. So to that end, we'll start putting him to work. Oh, he actually has some resistance left, so we can just continue working on reducing that. We don't need to actively start recruiting him. Jordiana is also not fully taken care of yet she is a really good character other than the fact that she's greedy if we were to have sisters of battle in this playthrough she would be a perfect candidate but as i mentioned before i don't want to do that i'd, I'd rather not distract from the fortress monastery that we're building for the space marines and also i think from a lore perspective it doesn't necessarily make sense to have sisters of battle in a space marine fortress monastery they don't necessarily always see eye to eye and i don't think they would be readily invited into a fortress monastery not that they can't work together right they they frequently do but 
I don't think they would hang out at each other's bases is what I'm saying. I don't think they're on those kinds of terms with each other. But she would be a perfect candidate. Short of that, we're going to make her into a tech priest. Since she can craft and mine and fight. And then we'll basically just make her a really well-armed tech priest. Oh, and then finally this guy, who is basically just an assault marine. That's all he's going to be good for. Now, again, these traits may change. There's all sorts of things we can do to kind of recondition them. So if we got rid of incompetent, he might actually have some skill in some of these other ones. And let's see. We can start recruiting him too. I'm just not sure... I mean, we can make him clean. That would be useful, actually. So, may as well. He's here. We're feeding him. We can basically let him hang out as a prisoner. Or we can put him to work in the prison, which is really, really limited in terms of what they can do. Or anybody we, re we recruit, we can then basically just let out into the base at large. And they can start mining at this um, limestone. Or, you know, whatever else we need them to do. So, I meant to send you guys back. I got completely distracted there when I realized they had just been standing around at the base. Let's reform the caravan. We're going to send them home. I'd prefer to send somebody else to deal with this. I mean, we can send Cyrus, but since that is a... We're basically walking into a battle, right? We may as well send maybe a few extra people. Travel supplies. I want to bring all the pemmican... Nutrient paste is fine. Yeah, bring all the meals. It's going to be quite heavy, though. Otter meat, berries. Uh, you know what? Some of this raw food might not be worth it. We have more orc meat than we know what to do with. But the survival meals will last forever, so I think it makes more sense to keep those. And then the fine meals will give us some sort of mood boost for eating it. So there's some value there. But the raw food is no different than the raw food we already have. And there's quite a lot of it. Right, so we'll take all the components. There's a steel knife. We may as well grab that. It looks like that might be the one that Cyrus is carrying on him, though. That's That might be why it's already equipped. A rune of fortune. Yeah, but we can't have Eldar runes that we're bringing around with us. I think uh, that's probably fine. We're going to be moving a lot slower than we would normally otherwise be, but that's okay. I want to make sure we get all the components, though. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay. So off they go. So I just got word that the brawny stompers of the Overfiend have lost Carpenter City to Ministin, who are, again, just a regular faction of humans that we plan to assist. Which is great. It means that the... I mean, not necessarily the forces of Imperium, but just the forces of mankind overall are pushing back against the Xenos, even without our direct intervention. Uh, while we're talking about notifications, let's actually look at this quest here. So it's called the Deserter. We have Nuslonusmos Moose. Wow, okay. Whatever you say, buddy. A rich kid is calling from nearby. She has deserted the army of the Empire of Perfection, is being hunted by a loyalty squad. She wishes to join you at Castellum Incorruptus. She knows the location of a key outpost containing everything needed to develop psychic powers, including two psychic neuroformers. That sounds like heresy. Beware if you accept Moose, you will become an enemy of the Empire of Perfection. The pursuing loyalty squad will attack immediately. It's composed of six champions, two janissaries, and three troopers. So... I don't plan to use Psylinx in this Let's Play. We have the 40k Psyker mod, and that's really the only kind of like powers or abilities that we're going to be using. So I want to stay away from the vanilla stuff. I also don't feel like becoming an enemy of the Empire of Perfection because I feel like we just... 
stopped being an enemy of theirs, right? I, I'm pretty sure all of our recruits, like Foses here, they were from the Empire of Perfection. That's who attacked us. And since then, I think we've had peace talks to end that. Or am I thinking of the other Star Wars Let's Play that we're doing? I know we probably had peace talks in that one too, but I clearly we're no longer an enemy of theirs given what the quest says. So why would we then piss them off once more? I don't see any reason to do that just for two neuroformers I'm not going to use and a, a pawn that's obviously not a space marine candidate if she's female. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to dismiss. Thanks, but no thanks. Now that I think about it, though, uh, while she potentially was, or she definitely was not a space marine candidate, um, all of the Janissaries and stuff that attacked us potentially would have been perfect candidates. So maybe I should have looked at that as the recruiting opportunity, not the, the pawn that was fleeing to us, but uh, too late now. I already threw the thing away, so whatever. It's fine. We don't, we don't need any more enemies. I want to be attacked by the 40k factions. I don't want to be fighting vanilla enemies anyways so so Demetrios just joined up Demetrios again is the come on there we go uh, the apothecary recruit so let's see what do we want him doing in the meantime uh, he won't firefight okay well we'll put patient at two doctoring at one Vat maintenance can be a four. Bed rest at two. Yeah, we'll make these all match. Hunting, no. Cooking, no. Combat training is going to be up there for everybody. Artwork, not concerned about it. Recon, not for you. Hauling is fine. Research, we're not going to be doing. And guarding, probably not the job for an apothecary. Wow, so... You don't have a whole lot to offer currently. Mining is zero. That's unfortunate. What about construction? One. Well, what can you do? I guess let's set hauling and cleaning to two. At least he can make himself useful that way. You're just going to grab a log? Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably worth having somebody run around and be the janitor right now because it is pretty filthy in here. Eventually, of course, we'll have servitors to do that job, but the time being um it's gonna fall to i guess we'll call them chapter serfs I, i've mentioned this previously i don't intend to have dedicated chapter serfs the only chapter serfs that we'll have are going to be these guys who are not yet inducted into even the scout marines but we do intend to turn them into marines they're just not there yet and so the the newest of initiates will be serfs but only for a brief amount of time so Cyrus is gonna be back within the day and oh wow another recruit Kominata so you are the other guy who's like useless at everything therefore Let's see, firefighting, patient, yeah, do not do any doctoring. Don't you dare. Okay, so we'll get rid of all of those. Combat training, that's fine. No recon, no nuclear, no resources. Uh, we're just going to make it so that you do a whole lot of that. Yeah, that's good for now. So off you go. And that should get this place cleaned up if we have two of them basically working on that full time. It should be pretty spotless in here. Meanwhile, the command center is coming along nicely. Because we're running into limestone now, I do have to dig a little bit further than intended and build these... Um... Oh wow, there was a big ass fight. I'm a bit... Sorry, I missed it. Martellus and Heracus were fighting. Martellus and Heracus. Sorry, Martellus and Tarkus were fighting Heracus. 
That's the second time that he's picked a fight with Space Marines and lived to tell the tale. That's a pretty bold move, but not one that I would recommend. Anyway, we're running into limestone, so I have to mine a little bit further than I would have liked. And then basically fill in the spots with these sandstone, smooth stone walls, which look identical to the smooth stone walls that are left when we just smooth over the sandstone that's there. But again, uh, if we want one kind of uniform wall, then we're going to have to do quite a lot of that probably as we expand. All right, so Arsen and Cyrus both made it back and in one piece no less so they're gonna run on in and I assume grab some food they've been eating berries off the ground for quite a while actually no they're just unloading their stuff and then Cyrus immediately goes to target practice that's that is very Cyrus of him and yeah Arston's gonna get some training in with his shotgun too trigger finger is probably a little bit itchy after being locked up for so long and they're going to wander. So, the question then is, who do we want to send on this next mission? We do have these peace talks. There's 13 days to do that. And then there is this battlefield here, which I believe... Sorry, I clicked the wrong thing there. Yeah, we have 24 days to deal with. So, this is the more immediate concern. Given that Thule is just kind of hanging out, I think it makes a lot of sense to send him... And maybe one other person as backup. I could send him and Mikolas. The thing is, they don't complement each other that well because they're filling effectively the same role. So... I would prefer to keep one of them behind. That way, if there is any... Anything that happens in the base that requires somebody to kind of step in and calm things down. You know, I... I would need one of them to do it and then it would also be nice to have a more ranged combatant because they both have power weapons and pistols so like we wouldn't send Martellus we need him at the base too much but Tarkus or we could send Cyrus again though I feel like he's earned a bit of a break but I think yeah so he does have the wanderlust trait meaning he really really wants to be out and about he doesn't like hanging out in the base therefore it kind of does make a lot of sense to send him Arston will need to look at his priorities he is he doesn't have wanderlust so he has no he has no qualms about hanging out in the base all day therefore let's see first let's get you set up here we'll put doctoring at four so that we can ask him to do it but he won't readily do it Wardening, he's actually quite skilled at, but we have enough people doing that, so let's put it at a four. Jailer, we could maybe prioritize higher, but I'm not going to worry about that right now either. Hunting, I don't know if it's a great idea to have him hunting with a shotgun, but whatever. Combat training is fine. Recon, that might be a good idea. He's a scout after all. Those are not of any concern. Yeah, so something like that. The thing is, he can help with building. He's will not do. Oh, uh, yeah, because he was set to really low. So, yeah, let's put that at a three. Hunting can stay at three as well. Um, hmm. You know what? I'm going to set recon at, like, four for now. I'd honestly prefer he help with construction. That's going to be the biggest thing that we're working on right now. So every little bit counts. And it doesn't matter if his skill's only a five. He can build floors as well as anybody, right? So I guess to that end, let's queue up for the next mission before we call it a day here. And I meant to right click. Thank you. So we'll send Thule to negotiate. And Cyrus will be his escort just in, in case things go south. We have unlimited days of food as usual. I don't think there's really anything that we need to send with them. So we'll say no pemmican, no medicine. You guys just eat what you find. Oh, apparently no, we do need to send them with some food. Okay, in that case, do take the pemmican. Because unlike the package survival meals that will eventually expire, 
but it will last you for the duration of your trip at the very least. Actually, to that end, it might make even more sense to take the simple meals, but pemmican is fine. So, yeah, that looks good to me. And with that, I think we'll call it a day. So, let's see what's next for the base. When we have a few more recruits join us and we can get a more kind of concerted mining effort going, we're going to start expanding into the rest of this limestone. I've been trying to go west because it's sandstone over here and the sandstone is 400 versus the limestone is 700. So it's almost twice as much work to mine out the limestone. But if we have more people to throw at it, it'll go by a little bit quicker. There's still plenty of work to do on this side, though, so we can still continue to prioritize that. And I've moved the mineral scanner over. So as you can see, we're finding some pockets of, I believe this is all steel. I think that's components. Yeah, machinery. This is steel again. Really would like to find some compacted plast steel. I wouldn't mind that at all. But uh, to that end, if we do get another advanced component, it might be worth throwing down the ground penetrating scanner so we can start scanning this area as well and then if we do find anything we can throw down the uh, deep drill to start harvesting it we'll also set up a quarry eventually too but that's going to have to happen somewhere kind of deeper in the base probably we'll need more servitors to operate it too right now we don't really have anybody fit for that role not a whole lot of people that are skilled at only mining which is kind of what I'm looking for for that uh, so I guess the most immediate thing for the base expansion then would be A, this, B, figuring out what's going to go here. Again, I'm kind of leaning toward a mess hall, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a mess hall. It could be something else. Could be training facilities, shooting range type of thing. So let me know what you guys think should go there. Uh, I'm still open to ideas, but I, I do have a couple of my own that I'm leaning towards, but I'm always happy to be talked into something better. Uh, what else do we have going on? So we'll pick back up when Thule and Cyrus arrive at the peace talks. I don't think... Actually, you know what? Scratch that. Because I think they'll arrive and we'll just get a notification as to what happened. So it, it's probably not worth me coming back and starting the recording just for that. Instead, I'll let them go. We'll get the result. We'll come back. I'll keep the notification here so you guys can see what happened. But I'll probably just continue playing off camera, let that happen. And once they arrive back here, we'll send some people out to this battlefield. And that might be where we pick back up. Unless, of course, we get raided first, which it seems likely that we will. I guess we'll see. Anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching. I had a great time playing some RimWorld with you. And I look forward to seeing you guys back here for the next episode.